commentaries from the heart of Father Antonio Agnes. Today is Monday of the fifth week of ordinary time. Today the church celebrates the memorial of Saint Agatha, Virgin and Martyr. First reading, 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 1 to 7, 9 to 13. Thus reading Mark chapter 6, verses 53 to 56. Friends, in the psalm we say, we call, The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, there is this line that ends the psalm. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Obviously, when you mention the word goodness in that psalm, we are thinking already about God. It is only God who is all goodness and the source of all goodness. And so in that psalm, we say goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. We are already asking that God himself will follow us all the days of our life. No wonder the psalm will end by saying, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because this goodness which is God himself will lead us to his house, his house forever. Goodness is God. God is goodness. Today's saint, Saint Agatha, means goodness. Her name from the Greek means Agathos. Agathos in Greek means goodness. And today, the church wants us to reflect on how we can indeed become goodness. Of course, goodness with a little g, a small letter g. God is a goodness with capital G. But we are called to be little goodnesses wherever we find ourselves. We can say today that the church wants us to all become Agatha, where we are. A little Agatha at your home. Become Agatha at your house. Become Agatha at your workplace. Agatha, goodness, Agathos. In Greek, is indeed what we are meant to be. And so, we are saying Agatha, who was a virgin and died for that sake and her faith, to become an inspiration for all of us to seek the goodness of God, which we pray daily. Anytime we pray, the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, Psalm. Friends, today's first reading, we continue the reading from the Kings. The Kings. We see already in 1 Kings chapter 6, which we didn't read, we hear about Solomon building the temple. Today, we hear about he now bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the temple. Already we are in chapter 8 of First Kings. And so, we see for the first time, we can say in the Bible, a liturgical procession. Today, this movement of King Solomon with the priests and the people of Israel from one place carrying the Ark of the Covenant into the house of God is what we can see already in what we call Eucharistic processions. And when we come for what we call Corpus Christi processions, we see a similar thing happening. Because friends, our life is all a procession. Life is a pilgrimage. It's a procession towards God himself. Indeed, as Solomon and the people moved from one point to the house of God, that is our movement, friends. In life, we are moving to the house of God. That is why, you see, in the ways of the church, every Sunday we pause to come to church, to this place that we know finally we shall stay, kind of to refill, to recharge, to get some energy, to continue to go for one week and come back. And so anytime we come to church, whether it's weekday masses or Sunday masses, friends already, we are practicing our last prophet procession. We are practicing how we shall possess one day into the house of God. When they say, the saints come, going, marching in, we shall be in that number. And so Solomon and the Israelites give us this liturgical procession that we make every time at Mass. The Mass begins the procession, reminding us of our own procession. And friends, we are told that when the Ark of God was put in the temple, finally goes Shekinah, Shekinah, glory, to control. Every day we come to Mass, this Shekinah is seen when the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. Indeed, 
the Shekinah that is mentioned in the first reading today is the one that overshadows us at every Mass when the body and blood of Christ becomes a living presence amongst us. We walk again to receive Holy Communion. In the Gospel reading, friends, we have Jesus who is also on his tour. You know, he's always touring nations, places, people's homes. Jesus is still on his tour. And it's interesting that Jesus is on a pastoral visit. Visiting homes, home visitation, pastoral visitation. And we are told that anywhere he went, people came out to be healed, to be touched. Don't forget that the little difference in the gospel for today is the fact that people decide to touch him. Yes, they might have heard of him, they might even see him, but until they decide to touch him, they will remain the same. That is why, friends, at Mass, at Mass, at Mass, you don't just hear the word of God, you don't just see the Mass happening, but we participate in it. We touch Jesus when we go to receive communion physically. That touch, that spiritual touch, that divine touch, every communion we receive at Mass is a touch of Jesus himself. Not just touching some part of his clothing as we heard the gas reading. They only touch just a part of his clothing. But you, a Catholic communicant every day, you don't, let, don't just touch Jesus' clothing, you touch his very body and blood in communion. Yes, this is what we call personal relationship with Christ. A personal relationship that we talk about is not something from the mind. Sometimes some people ask you, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? It's only something of the mind. Mind thinking. But you, a Catholic, you don't just accept. You are indeed living with Jesus when we see communion. It's a personal relationship you have with him when we go for communion. We pray that as we go every day at Mass to see communion, we touch Jesus and he comes to live in us. Indeed, like the men and women mentioned today's reading, God's reading, our sicknesses, our diseases, our pains, our unemployment, our marriages, our problems will come to an end. Indeed, when the Master touches you, you are touched indeed, and your life will never remain the same. May this spiritual touch of Jesus at every Mass, at communion that we receive and feel, become really alive. Even when we go to Mass, we faith, receive Him in communion. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the sacraments. Because at every sacrament, in the celebration of every sacrament, Father, you touch us and we touch you. May our daily touch of you, may our daily contact with you in the sacrament, Father, indeed one day bring us to the real touch and we shall be with you face to face shall be with you in heaven. This is our prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ.